isolated at the juncture of the North Atlantic and the Arctic Oceans, is the Nordic country of Iceland. Due to its location above a hot spot called the Iceland Plume, this country is rife with volcanic activity, hot springs, and geysers. Geothermal power is captured and distributed to houses across Iceland, covering 85% of the country's heat and electricity. There is a certain amount of trepidation that comes from living along the active western volcanic zone. That being said, the people of West Iceland have seen opportunities. For every three Icelandic people, there is one Icelandic pony. Outside Reykjavik, Becca Rist follows a lifelong dream as she shares her country on horseback with visitors each day. In Hapnafjardish, Thora applies her passion for art and innovation to her herbal salt company, Herta Islandica. Here she infuses wild Icelandic blueberries and brown kelp from the west fjords into salt garnishes that enhance any dish. Forty miles north of Reykjavik, in the town of Borgafjöll, Guran draws upon family knowledge in her work as a wool colorist and botanist. So my name is Guðrún Bjarnadóttir. Uh, I grew up in Reykjavík, but now I live in uh, Borgarfjörður. I'm a, a botanist and I am also a veterinarian technician. And well, I've always loved animals. I have a dog, I have chicken and uh, I always wanted to be a farmer, but that didn't work out. And after that, I sort of turned to botany and ended up using plants to color wool. I grew up in a, a great coloring tradition. My mother was a sewing teacher. My grandmother was uh, knitting and uh, she taught me how to recognize the plants. Iceland is only a small island. We only have 450 plant species. So our problem is we have so few plants we can color with. Norway has 1,300. We also came as settlers from the British Isles and they have 6,000. So they can get all colors. We cannot get, for example, we cannot get good red and blue. We cannot get blue at all. Blue is the color of the kings and the rich people. And that's because it was so rare to get. The wool that I use uh, to color, it's Icelandic wool from Icelandic sheep, and it's made in the East Tex wool factory, the only wool factory we have in Iceland. I enjoy most uh, in this process uh, the surprise of the colors. You can never control the colors. If you could control them completely, it wouldn't be any fun anymore. Even after I've been coloring now for, well, almost 10 years, I'm still uh, finding new colors and getting the, the great wow moments. And I, I think this is in my genes. I had no chance of doing anything else. My, my family didn't have horses, but I know when I was four and we saw horses out in the field, I told my parents, you can leave me there and pick me up later. <laughs> And uh, so I, I wanted to be around these animals. So I was uh, 12 years old when I got my first horse. Now we have more than 40 horses. They are all different individuals. Bonding with a horse is among the most beautiful things you can do in your life and get to know their character, how they are. And they're really, like they, they allow you to, to get to know them very well. Icelandic horses, when you look at them, you see they, they are smaller than many breeds. Their skills are the most important. That is the, the most, most important difference from other breeds because they, they are five-gated makes them really, really interesting, because most horses in the world are three-gated. 
and that can be really fast, as called flying pace. And some Icelandic horses can do that, and some can't. And really interesting to know that it was recently actually there was a team of Swedish and Icelandic scientists. They found the gene that makes the horse go the fifth gate. So if the horse carry this gene, they can do it. If they don't, they can. There are horseback riding trails all over Iceland. And it's the best way to see them because you almost dance with the nature when you horseback ride through a beautiful, beautiful Icelandic landscape. There is like ice and fire and everything between. <laughs> In the beginning, I had to do everything. I was producing and uh, designing and doing everything. But today I'm the CEO and I take care of the innovation, the development. Black lava salt. It's very popular because people like to try. It's about experience. We think so much of the lava and lava herbs. It's because we have that all around. In the summertime, I can just go outside and point at most of the herbs just in this little lava rock outside here. We in Ørsta Icelandica like to believe what is most unique is that we use uh, Icelandic wild herb mostly. We have a lot of people from the countryside and from the local area here to collect the herbs. But uh, then we hand pack everything and we make everything here and we, we like to have all the packing environmental friendly. So we use glass or cellophane or paper to decorate in nature. We use herbs no one else has used uh, before. We think of food as a color and we think, think how it looks and how it sounds, the name. And then we learn to appreciate the taste. And our customers, they are innovating too because they are telling us what to do with the product. Because we don't know, we just try something and it tastes nice, but we don't know how to combine in the cuisine. So our customer, they innovate with us. And I think this uh, environment and what, what is growing here is part of what the company became. In many Nordic countries, there is a time of life when people seek out new life abroad, sometimes permanently. Icelanders, however, like Guran and Becca, often find their way back home. Why? Perhaps it is the natural beauty, the tight weave of family combined with the looser appreciation and freedom for innovation. In a place where ice meets fire in an ever new and everlasting dance. What might you discover in Iceland? <laughs>